Hello Cabinet, it's the eve of the budget, so we are looking today at what the real Chancellor might have in store for next week. So it's uh, looking pretty grim so far, there doesn't seem to be a huge amount of headroom as they call it, the amount of money available for giveaways, even though we're in an election year and might expect the government to want to sweeten the deal with voters a little bit. Um, I'm just going to throw it open to the floor, really, on what you guys would like to see happen, and if you were Chancellor for the day, what it would be that you would be demanding for your department. Health Secretary, what are you looking for in the uh, next week's budget? So I've heard about the vaping tax that's being put on, and since we were talking about taxes, I think that's a really bad idea because people who are already addicted that's not going to stop them from going and getting vapes. And actually, the biggest problem we've got is young people and children getting addicted to vaping, is disrupting their classroom etiquette, their performance at school. And we don't have enough evidence about what damage this can really do to them. And we have a role to safeguard in children against, against harm. And I think the government just needs to act more proactively and just put a ban on it and put an age limit on it, it's not enough to tax it. We have seen over the years with taxing smoking, there has been a decrease, but why do we even have smokers at all knowing the damage it does? And that's because people who are already addicted, they're not good, nothing is gonna stop them really from, um, from going and buying cigarettes. And that could be said the same way for vaping. And on a personal level, what would you like to see in terms of taxation? You know, more money in your pocket at home. What, what, what would you, uh, what would you do if you were the chancellor for the day? Well, I think it's it's quite multifactorial because yes, uh, a tax holiday or a little tax break would be great because it would incentivize people who are working to work more hours, spend their money more. So in that way, it can empower the economy. Um, right now, the way that we're taxed, I think you're almost de-incentivizing de working because if you work hard, you end up essentially uh, being taxed more. That's definitely been a reason for me to not take on extra shifts at work because I know whatever extra income I get, I'm just going to get taxed on it. So in that way, I do think there is a benefit, but is this a short-term goal? Is this just something that the Tories are kind of using to get the voters and we're going to have to go back on it? You know, right now, I don't know if we're in the correct economic position to be pulling back from the public sector and the funding of the public sector even more with these tax breaks. Transport Secretary, what do you reckon? Well, I'm I'm looking forward uh, in the budget for them to do a few things for the, the industry. I, I'm looking for, uh, if not a freeze, a cut in fuel duty. We all know how important transport is for business whether it's lorries up and down the country to taxis like myself. Uh, and and uh, if the fuel comes down, means that more people have got more money in their pockets. Businesses have got more money. Uh, and, and for me, that's going to be key to see what he can do. I think we're all seeing that net zero is going to be catastrophic for, for the country, medium and long term. I, I saw this week they, they'd imported... There was that big, big, big boat that turned up full of EV cars from China um, that people are saying, oh, great, let's have EV cars. But what they don't realise is that the Chinese factory that built these cars was using coal-fired power stations. So, it, you know, people need to wake up. And it's all very well saying, I'm going to save the planet. I'm going to buy an EV car. Um, but the country producing them, is, is using masses and masses of fossil fuel. You know, something needs to be done. Home Secretary, well, let me guess, more money for the police. <clears throat> more money for the police, yeah. Well, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, however, you're talking about the uh, the public spent, the public companies, yeah. If they're going to actually be serious about making sure that we get the right police officers when it comes to um, recruitment and retention, the way I work now is in cyber vetting. Now, you look at what's happening. There's, going to, there's an awful lot of police officers who quite correctly have been asked to leave or they've been sacked or they've actually suffered with uh, criminal prosecutions because of using social media like WhatsApp messages. They should not be doing that. So I think after yesterday's report, there should be a lot of money spent on making sure 
uh, the, the the vetting process for police officers. It's something that's never been in place. It's never had it. When I joined the police, there was no vetting. You simply didn't have, make sure you didn't have a criminal record. I think that's the way to go. We've got to start using technology. You know, so that's going to cost a lot of money. So when it comes down to the policing, there's got to be money pumped into it. And if there were tax cuts in the offing, what sort of taxes would you like to see cut? Would it national insurance, income tax, VAT? Where would you uh, Where would you get that good feeling going? You hit the nail on the head. That's what he's looking at. Virtually all those three and inheritance tax. So basically he's trying to say, look, there's going to be more money available to, to the consumer. Is that real money? Because everybody talks about pay rises. You've got to, you've got the doctors, you've got the nurses, you've got the teachers, you've got the, the armed services, you've even got the police. They all want a pay increase. These cuts are not pay increases. They basically, what they will do is allow people to have more disposable income. However, that money's already been spent. So people won't see it that way at all. But certainly the tax cuts, uh, cuts will help. Uh, what do you say to that, uh, Business Secretary? To be honest, yeah. big companies mean yeah. profit. Um, I, I, I'm a small business owner. I would be taxing the big companies because they earn more. They see more profit. They can contribute. At the end of the day, those big companies are made up of little people. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it takes a lot of people to have a big company or a big thing. And if you don't help, help the little people, well, there is no big company. And people need to start seeing that and maybe working or moving away from these big companies, really, um, you know, and stop supporting them. Uh, the likes of Facebook, Amazon, who don't pay taxes and yet earn thousands or millions off the back of all of us. Our Education Secretary, what's top of your agenda? Well, for me, it's absolutely got to be more funding for state schools. It's the only way we're going to start making a dent in the teacher retention and recruitment crisis. There's just not enough money to train our teachers, to keep our teachers and to keep our schools staffed enough. We need more money injecting into those fund into those state funded things. And what about on the personal level? Would you like to see tax cuts or increasing public spending or... What sort of thing would you think would you with the chance to do? Well, for me personally, I think it's always about kind of, you know, we want to fund everything and it's impossible, isn't it? So I guess I think for me personally, coming from a fairly working class background, I'd like to see the richer earners taxed more, um, businesses and companies that don't do great for the environment and all that money kind of pumped into education and healthcare because both... Both places now are just starting to break and crumble and it'd be an absolute crime shame to lose our NHS and for our state education to get any worse than it already is. Defence Secretary, it doesn't sound like the uh, Chancellor's going to be opening up the coffers for an increase in defence spending. What would, uh, what would you do? Well, I think you'll find last year the Chancellor promised to increase GDP spending on defence from 2.2% to 2.5%. In real terms, that was an increase of 11 billion. So actually, or retrospectively, he's already promised that amount of money. So the question is, is he going to break that promise? Because I can tell you now, he promised 5 billion, 2 billion and 3 billion over three years. That's 11 billion. So the first thing I'd like to remind the Chancellor is that he doesn't want to get a reputation of being yet another politician who continually breaks their promises. So let's look at the facts now, shall we? I'm pretty sure we have a war going on on our back doorstep between Ukraine and Russia. And only yesterday, Putin was threatening the use of intercontinental ballistic missiles. Do I think for one moment he's going to send a nuclear missile our way. No, I don't. But if he gets pushed out of the Donbass or, or, or the Baltic or the Crimea, I don't think he'd have any issue dropping some 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 shorter term missiles into that area um, before he leaves. So I would just like to remind the Chancellor that we have less ammunition now than we have had done for decades. And only last week, the CEO of Ryan Metalan, Germany's biggest producer of munitions, 
stated it will take Europe a decade, a decade to resupply the ammunition we require because we've shoved it off to Ukraine, etc. Now you, sorry, to finish. You then, then we realise we've also got the smallest army that we've ever had. Wouldn't even fill up Twickenham, seventy-two thousand, and there's one hundred thirty thousand plus employees at McDonald's in the UK. Do you think an increasing defence spending should come ahead of any giveaways, any tax cuts? Well, I, I, I personally would have no issue at raising the threshold of one percent for those who are struggling with this, you know, significant cost of living crisis. But yeah. you know, that might be a little bit of an ideological, you know, nice to have. Um, I certainly wouldn't. I wouldn't cut any taxes. I want to see it going into infrastructure, schools, education, agriculture, and defence. You know, we need to remember we're an island, and we really are an island now. You know, we're not part of Europe. Um, and our first duty, the first duty of government, is to protect their people. Thank you, Cabinet. We'll see you um, after the budget.